So kind of talking about like what I had said, if you look at, for instance, back in the day, we would keep the tongue to the roof of the mouth here. And then what that would do is force the jaw as we grow forward and hold it up. So when the tongue sits on the roof of the mouth, it basically locks the lower jaw up with the upper jaw. And then it makes sure it provides like scaffolding so the airway grows out this way. This is why all of our ancestors had big bone structure, big noses. They had well-pronounced cheek jaw lines. Whereas nowadays our airways are getting smaller and smaller to our tongue, not pushing our jaw forward and up as we develop. That makes it harder and harder. So let's just say, for instance, I've got decent development, but then maybe I have a milk allergy. So now my tonsils and adenoids are swollen when I'm seven every time I have milk and I don't really tell my parents about it. And then all of a sudden I start mouth breathing. So it's something where it's like, it's like switching software from like optimal software being like, I'm gonna nose breathe all the time except for when I'm eating, I want my mouth closed. And the non-optimal is I start mouth breathing because let's just say my allergies are bad or my tonsils or my adenoids get swollen and it's hard for me to breathe through my nose because my nose is already smaller than it was a thousand years ago. And then you know, before you know it, someone goes from nose breathing to mouth breathing and they go back and forth until it just gets easier for someone to like just stay a mouth breather. And then the minute we're mouth breathing all day long, we're not really pushing our jaw forward and up. So as a result, we're left as adults with these airways that are the size of a child's. And this is where we're left doing jaw surgery, braces, expanders, or using a CPAP. And I think people don't understand why. And it's crazy because There were guys a hundred years ago that were expanding kids at five, six years old to make sure that there was just enough space for their tongue to fit and to ensure that their basically nose was going to be adequate size by the time they're adult to ensure these kids weren't having sleep issues. So it's something that's been around for a very long time. I think after World War II, something where the money side of dentistry and how things were looked at changed. And, you know, we're now left with society where basically maybe 20% of people have some kind of sleep disorder breathing and it's only getting worse because our jaws and airways are getting smaller. And this is gonna continue to happen due to not having to chew all the time. And this is where kind of different tools and devices can be used to basically go back and recapture what we've lost to ensure that you know, after we get out of our thirties that we can still live a healthy life and have a good airway versus, you know, I've got to sleep with a CPAP for the rest of my life. And even if I'm using a CPAP eight hours a day, what about the other 16 hours a day that I don't get enough air to my body and it's affecting my health big time by the time I'm 50 and then couple that with stress. And this is kind of what's happened to our society. So really important just to kind of understand the mechanics of the airway and jaw and kind of, I think, why there are so many issues nowadays.